hello my lovelies welcome back to my channel this is your girl angel from simply angel tia in this video i'm gonna show you guys how to do this long mesh dress this dress here is something that you can do and have it wear as just like a normal dress if you wear something appropriate inside you can wear this dress just to go out an evening gown and something like that and or you can wear it to the beach as a bikini cover up to the pool or things like that but yeah it's gonna be a little bit of a multi-purpose dress if you want okay so this is what we're gonna be working on i'm gonna be talking about some changes as we go so uh, that i will make it throughout the video so i will explain this to you guys now so you're aware so um as i go deep into the video i actually talked about joining this uh the, the sides here all the way to the bottom and then i decided as i was doing it not to do that so i stopped a couple of uh, a couple of inches up and then decided to join it like this so this is a change that i make at a later time in the video okay so if you do see this like this in the pictures and everything like that the change does come but um um i do correct it by explaining to you what correction i made but otherwise this is what we're going to be working on i hope you guys enjoy this go grab your materials and let's go ahead and get started okay my lovelies so before we get this project started i'm going to show you the materials that we're using for it today and as you can see i have my two color yarns um it's up to you if you want to use uh, alternation of colors or just one color uh, or more than two colors okay so i'm using this brand called azurite which is 100 percent acrylic this yarn is lightweight number three um color number i will call this maroon but uh, this company goes by color number which is 3025 and recommended hook size for this is three and a half to four millimeter crochet hook and you get 50 grams or 140 meters for a skin like this so the information on this one is exactly the same it's a black one um but the color number is 585 okay so these are the two that i'm alternating for this um project today for a crochet hook size i'm using a little bit bigger i'm using a 4.25 millimeter crochet hook and that's just a preference so you can obviously use whatever uh crochet hook that is comfortable with you but i recommend you go with one that is normally around the recommended size uh so this is for 4.25 millimeter crochet hook or g6 us um i have my tape measure here just to determine the length and the size that i'm making i have a darning needle here for us to put our panels together after i have some stitch markers to help us know where we're going to be sewing from where to where and of course i have my scissors to be able to cut my strands okay let's go ahead and get okay, started my lovelies so i'm going to start the project with the black color yarn here and as you can see I have it wind uh, around my finger like that that's just how I work and how I control my tension so I'm gonna go ahead and start by doing a slip knot I'm gonna just do it like this take my hook slide it off my thumb put it in the circle yarn over pull it through and then release and then pull okay so this is how I do my uh, slip knot here <clears throat> to start with the uh, the first panel because we're gonna be doing two panels all together the back panel and the front panel so uh, both of the panels will be exactly the same so it doesn't matter if you're making the first uh, the back one first or the front one first they're exactly identical okay the most important part here is you're gonna measure your widest part of your hips so the circumference of the widest part of your hips and then you're gonna divide that by two and the first panel when you stretch your work is gonna have to add up to the num that number so for example for me uh, the widest part of my hips uh, comes up to 40 uh, inches so I divide that by two so that's 20 so I make a chain that is going to stretch to 20 centimeters uh, so, uh, 20 inches okay all right so I'm gonna I decided that I will do a chain of 60 so I'm gonna do one two three four five okay so this is my chain of 60 here this is going to be one half of my panel and we start from the top of the uh of this mesh dress and we move downward so this is going to be the part that goes around my collar okay my um the top of my dress okay so i have my chain of 60 here so however many you need so again like i said i stretch these up it's going to come up to my 60 uh sorry to my 20 inches 
which is what half of the circumference of my widest part of my body is or my widest part of my hips so i'm gonna go ahead and put my thumb here to start the first row and i'm gonna add two stitches which is the turning stitches and then i'm going to yarn over and into that third one in the back of the stitch i'm going to bring it in and complete a double crochet just like that okay and then i'm going to yarn over go into the next stitch right here and go into the back and complete a double crochet okay so instead of just going into the front stitch right here i go and grab the back lump to, to complete my stitches like this and then i continue these all the way to the end of the row so i'll have you guys do the same and when you get to the end of the row come back and i will show you how to start the second row okay see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so i have completed the first row and again it's just a simple row of double crochet so as you can see just simple like that okay now i'm going to start the second row and this row you're going to repeat for a couple of times so we're going to start the row by doing a chain of four so one two three four and then we're going to turn our work we're going to skip this next stitch here right here we're going to go into this one and we're going to complete a double crochet okay and i'm going to chain one then skip this stitch and into that stitch i'm going to complete a double crochet and then chain one skip this stitch into this one complete a double crochet chain one skip and complete a double crochet okay so we're creating the mesh section of our dress here and we're going to continue this all the way to the end of the row so i will meet you guys at the end of the row so i can show you how to start the next and then i will have you repeat that for a couple of rows before we change it up a little bit okay so i will see you guys when you have reached the end of this row okay my lovely so i have completed the second row here but i did come back just to show you how to finish off the last one here so as you can see i have done my double crochet right here i chained one and what i'm going to do is this stitch here we're going to skip and there's the chain four that we did we're going to go into the third stitch from the bottom and we're going to complete our double crochet in there like this okay so that's how we complete the final one so it looks like this all right so and then we're going to start our row, row three and we're going to start by doing a chain of four three four and then turn and then we're going to repeat this again so we're going to skip the stitch that is in this gap here and we're going to complete a double crochet on top of the double crochet from the previous row chain one and then we're going to skip this stitch and in this stitch we're going to complete a double crochet chain one and continue like that and again these double uh, these four chains at the beginning here three count as a double crochet and then one count as a chain one to separate the stitches like this okay so you, for this part of the project you're going to always start by doing a chain of four um so that you can create your double crochet uh, which is containing three stitches and then a chain one okay so i've done my chain one here we'll skip this gap and on top of this double crochet from the previous row i will do a double crochet just like that okay so i will continue with this until i get to the end when i get to this end here I will go again and do one two three this is my third stitch from the chain four that we did after doing a chain one i'm going to be completing a double crochet right here so i will have you guys just go all the way before you when you get to this final or the last final um second last double crochet from the end come back so i can show you how to complete that final one and then i'll have you guys build up a couple of rows of this okay see you guys in a okay bit. my lovelies so um i have completed this third row as you can see this is how the project looks so far so as you can see it's just two rows of mesh so that we can start to create our mesh dress which is pretty much what this is um so i have done my double crochet here and a chain one and like i told you the chain four that we start every row with we're going to go ahead and count one two three so in the third stitch right here we're going to go in and complete a double crochet and that is to leave the fourth one here as the chain one okay so that goes together with the chain one and the way you do it here is um, the chain turns a little bit so i will go back and repeat that so one two three 
so i will just flip my work like this so i can go in the back of that stitch like this it makes it easier and it sits properly okay so like that okay all right so and then we're going to start again by doing a chain of four and turning and then repeating this for 10 rows of the mesh so as you can see i have two already we're going to do eight more when you have 10 altogether rows of the mesh come back to the video and i will show you how to change the stitch a little bit we're going to do a little bit uh, of a solid part and then after that the rest of the uh, of the dress will be in the mesh okay but come back after 10 rows of the mesh uh, uh rows here okay see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so i have completed my 10 rows in the mesh here so as you can see that is how it looks like and uh, now we're going to change the stitch a little bit and what i'm going to do here is i'll start the row by doing a chain of two so one two this chain of two counts as a double crochet i'm going to flip my work turn it like this and in this chain one gap that we have here i'm going to go right into that gap and complete a double crochet okay and then on top of this double crochet i'm going to complete a double crochet just like that and then in this chain one gap i'm going to complete a double crochet and then moving on to the top of the previous double crochet i'll do a double crochet and then in the gap so pretty much what we're doing here is we're putting a double crochet in every stitch uh, across this row and when we get to the end of the row we're going to you're going to come back to the video so i'll have you guys complete this row and i will do the same when we get to the end you'll come back so i can show you how to finish off the final stitch and then be able to turn and repeat by doing a number of rows in this stitch okay so go ahead and complete this row and i'll see you guys when you've completed the last one in the um second last uh double crochet here okay i'll see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so i have completed the first row here and as i said i will show you how to complete the final two stitches here um so i will just go ahead and complete a double crochet in the chain one gap right here and then out of the remaining chains here one two three in the third i will go in and complete a double crochet okay so that is from our chain four where we started off the row so this is how my um first row in the solid double crochet looks like and then i'm going to repeat this nine more times so to make it ten so i'm going to start by doing a chain of two and turning and then in this next stitch right here i'm going to complete a double crochet so your chain two always counts as a double crochet in this case here and then in this next uh, no, one, I'm going to go ahead and complete a double crochet. And in the next stitch, I'm going to complete a double crochet. And then I'll do this all the way to the end. When I get to the end here, out of my uh, chain, uh, chain three or chain four at the end, I'm going to complete a double crochet on top of that here. Okay. And I'm going to do that nine more times. So this is my first one here, nine more times. When I finish and I have 10 rows in the solid double crochet, I'm going to come back to show you how to start a different uh, row. And that's going to be a mesh row like this, but we're also going to be changing color. So if you want to see how we change color to the maroon one, come back and I'll show you how to do that at that time. Okay, see you guys in a bit. Okay, my lovelies. So I have completed 10 rows in the double crochet stitch here. So as you can see, this is where we started. Um, this is the mesh, mesh area here and then we did 10 rows of the solid so we're going to now uh, finish off with this color for now so i'm going to bring my scissors and i'm gonna cut my yarn somewhere here not too much off a little bit like that and then we're going to switch to the maroon color so for switching to the maroon color i'm going to pretty much get my this color ready then i'm going to show you how to change or at least how i change color um, if you know other ways or better way that you're used to changing color, please go ahead and do it that way. But I'm going to quickly show you how to do it here. That, that's how I do it. So as you can see, I have this working yarn here. Okay. I'm going to remove this and I'm going to go back into these two loops here. 
and then do that like this so this is instead so this is where i would have finished my double crochet here so i remove those i have my working yarn here that i'm gonna hold down i will bring in the new color that i'm changing to and i just hold it like this and i bring a loop it in like this so now i have these two strings here that i will eventually tie but for now i'm gonna go now and start the next row and from this point on we're going to be alternating 10 rows of the mesh like this in red and then we change our color we do 10 rows in black 10 rows in red and it's now just mesh all through until we get all the way down so i'm doing this until it's a very long um uh, dress cover so in this case we're not doing this anymore this is the only part that we have that is solid here okay so i'm going to start the mesh by doing a chain of four so one two three four i'm going to turn my work and then i'm going to skip this stitch here in the next stitch i'm going to do a double crochet just like we did when we changed the the stitch here okay then i'm going to chain one and skip this stitch and in this stitch i'm going to complete a double crochet so let's make sure i'm in the center here like that chain one skip this stitch in this stitch i'm going to complete a double crochet chain one skip this stitch in this one complete a double crochet chain one and just continue to repeat this all the way to the end and again when you get to the end just like we did with this here <clears throat> come back to the video i will show you how to finish off this the first row of this mesh and how to start the second and then i'll pretty much have you guys repeat this until you have this panel completed and the length of the uh, dress is going to be up to you so like i said i'm making mine to be a really long one but if you like yours to be shorter then you will pretty much just kind of stop where you think the length is suitable for you okay but for now let's complete this row and meet back when you have reached the end here after you have completed your second last mesh double crochet come back see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so as you can see here i pretty much completed my uh, second last double crochet here with a chain one so now i'm going to skip this stitch right here and i'm going to go over to the top of the chain two here to complete my double crochet just like this okay so the same thing that we did when we started the mesh right in the bottom here so this is how your first row of the red looks like i'm going to um, just kind of nod the change of color here what i will do is i will just do a little bit of a nod here so that it doesn't pull off and come apart and then i will weave everything in at the end okay so i'm just gonna nod it like this so that way this is nice and secure like that okay so for the second row in the red again we start with the chain four so this is the point where we just do chain four at the beginning of every row um and it's gonna be for the rest of these because we're no longer doing the solid part for for this part okay so we skip this stitch here which is the gap and we go on top of the double crochet and complete the double crochet chain one we go on top of the previous double crochet and do a double crochet chain one and then you just pretty much continue this for 10 rows and then after 10 rows you change your color just like i showed you and you do the mesh 10 rows in the black color and then you change back the, to the red do 10 more rows of the mesh in the red and then you just continue like that until you have the length that you're looking for okay so i'm gonna go ahead and work these all the way and uh, when i have the length for this panel i'm gonna come back to show you guys how it looks like and then um i will have you guys do the second panel the second panel will just be to repeat the first one exactly the way you did the first okay but for now finish this first one it will take you guys a while to finish it as will me as will i and then when i have the panel completed i'll come back to show you guys how to how it looks like okay i will see you guys then okay my lovelies so i have reached the end of where i want uh my length of this dress to end um and as you can see here i just completed my 10 rows in the mesh 
So I'm gonna cut the yarn here. I will just cut it somewhere, anywhere like this. Just very short, not to waste too much yarn. I'm gonna put this away and I'm just gonna do a chain one here to lock it in just so it doesn't unravel itself, okay? So I did pretty much, uh, let me show you here. So this is where we started. We started here and then we worked ourselves like this. This is the only part of the top that has a solid. And based on how I did it here, just gonna go right over our bust area. Um, and then we changed to the red to do, to do 10 rows in the mesh and then 10 rows in the black and then back to 10 rows in the mesh, uh, or, or sorry, in the red. And then we just continue to alternate it like that all the way to I finished it off with the black just because with the length that I was looking for, it turns out that this black color was going to be the end, which is perfect because I started with the black. It's nice that it ended with the with the black as well. OK, so it's very long. I haven't counted how many rows I did, but a lot. If you do the math here, I have excluding this part here. When I started the red, I have one two, three, and four blocks in red. And then I have one, two, three, four blocks in black, okay? And then plus this section here, which was the first row of double crochet, 10 rows of the mesh, and then 10 rows in the double crochet. Okay, so this is the length that I'm looking for. So I'm stopping this panel here. And then I'm going to pretty much get started with the second panel and I'm going to do it exactly the same. So again, starting with a chain of 60 plus two for the turning chain and then doing a row of double crochet, 10 rows in the mesh, 10 rows in double crochet, 10 rows in the mesh. And then you continue to alternate the colors like that. All right. So this is all here and you can see this where I changed the colors. It's all on the same side because I'm working in even numbers in terms of rows. So the mesh is all in one side like this. So I will have you guys do the same. Go complete your second panel. When you have two panels like this completed, come back to the video and I will show you where to join because we're gonna be joining the two panels from the sides and the top as well so that we can create our shoulder area and then of course our armpit area, okay? So when you have completed your second panel, come back and we will continue. See you guys in a bit. Okay, my lovelies. So I have completed my second panel for this dress. So as you can see, I have both panels here. I have one that we completed previously here. And then I have the second one that I completed. So exactly the same number of rows, the same order of color as we did for the first one. So we have two panels that are exactly the same pretty much okay so um now that that's done we're going to pretty much kind of put it together so we can do the joining so as you can see here this is going to be the top of my dress okay let me just move this out of the way here this is going to be the top of my dress here so we're going to join it a little bit on top here and then of course we're going to join the sides with an um with an exception of our armpit line here okay where we're going to have our arms come through and where it's going to go um where our armpits are going to be open okay pretty much now you're going to obviously decide on how long you want your armpit line to be uh, for me it's pretty much going to be dictated by the where this mesh section ends so this section here all this here is going to be open that's where my arm is going to go through and from here all the way down it's going to be joined okay so i go ahead and put my um I put my panel down like this. This is going to end up being the outside of my work and this is going to be the inside. So this is why I put it down like this. And then I'm going to take my second panel and I'm going to place that exact opposite. So the backs, to, they're going to face back to back. So again, I'm going to take this one and I'm going to place it like this. Okay. So that way I, when I join, I join the top here and I join the sides and then I'll flip it. Uh, to have the other side be my uh, right side okay so in this way in uh, at this point here you can use your um, stitch markers to mark where you want them to go but for me it's just literally where the mesh is gonna end so I'm gonna join my work until like, somewhere here so I don't need to put a stitch marker because I it's clear for me to see where I need to stop but if you do need the aid of the stitch marker please go ahead and place it where you want to place it 
but what we're gonna do for the state what we're gonna use the stitch markers for though is that we're gonna count a couple of uh, inches this way and we're gonna count a couple of inches this way to be able to join so that we can create our neckline here so for me I'm probably going to do let's say about 10 first so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so that's where my 10th stitch is here then I'm gonna do 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then I will just go on to the other side and put it into the tenth as well. So this is not 100% um, determined here. I'm just doing it like this for now. And then I will see how big the neckline is. I may have to do it a little bit smaller. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'll take my second stitch mark and put it there. And then I will count out on the other side. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'll go ahead and put that here. And then I will look at it to see if this is enough of a, of a neckline. And I think it's too big. So I may go like 15 so that I can kind of go into here. So I will do that now. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oop, 5. So let's see, 5 is here, 15. Oops, I, should have, I shouldn't have removed it like that. But anyways, I'll go and count 15 on the other side. So 1, 2, 3, 4. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So my 15th will be here. And on this side, I will do it a little bit better. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I will use my darning needle, put it there. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's going to be the 15th on the other side. So I'll remove my this and place it here instead. There you go. So I think I'll do it more like this. So this is where my neckline is. And then this is where I'm joining it up on top here. So I think I'll do it like this. So with that done, I have two darning needles. And I'm doing this because I have two different colors. So I will use one for a yarn for the black se section of the uh, dress. And one for the red section. And as you can see here, this is what I'm talking about. We have these blocks here that are different colors. And I would rather not use a black yarn to join here or and or the red to join here because then you will see it very clearly through. So I will just make it very easy. I'll take some I'll take some yarn from the black, some yarn from the the red and use the different darning needles. And then what I will do is I will use the black to join the black section. And then when it comes to the red section, I will actually switch and just grab the darning needle that has a red yarn and I will join the red. Then I'll cut it and then I'll go and continue down like that, okay? But for now, we're going to start off with the uh, uh, black section because we do need to join the top. And you can take as much yarn as you need, but make sure it's not too long because it's a little bit difficult to use it while it's too long. Um, I'm just going to make that much here. I'm going to put it in my darning needle hole like that. And then I'm going to pretty much bring this down here. And I'm going to show you how to do uh, one section here. And then I'll have you do the both sides. So for this, I'm just going to use my darning needle. I'm going to go into the first stitch right here. And then on the other side, I'll grab the first stitch as well, which is this one here. Okay, just like that. Then I'll pull it through. And then on here, I take this, the long part. And the short part I just knot it once like that for now and then I will take my darning needle and just kind of join the rest of it and what I'll do is I'll grab the first yarn the first loop closest to me and then I'll grab on this side and then the the yarn closest to me on the opposite side okay then I'll pull just like that and then I'll move on to the next stitch and I'll do the same the closest loop to my to my side and closest loop to my side on the other side and I'm gonna pull and then the closest loop to my side and closest loop to my side on the other side and you get kind of like the uh, you get the idea here so you're gonna do this all the way to here so do that when you get to here come back I will show you how to finish it off here and then we'll move our 
uh, darning needle and do the other side and then I'll show you how to start this side here and then the rest of it you will do on your own okay all right my lovely so I have completed joining the top here with the exception of where my darning needle is and I will actually remove my darning needle because that's one of the stitch I need to work into and what I will do instead of going through it uh, in just one loop here and one loop on the other side I will actually go through both loops on this side and both loops on the other side and then I'll pull that through like that then i'll go into that space one more time but this time watch it here i'm gonna just bring my yarn around the darning needle like that okay and what this does is it's pretty much creates a knot for you so that you don't have to knot it at a later time like that and what i will do then is i'll just take my scissors and cut somewhere here not too short but not too long just in case you have to kind of change something here okay so as you can see, this is how this joining section looks like when you do use that technique like this. And if you flip it on the other side, this is how the other side looks like. So very nice. It doesn't look uh, very bad at all. Okay. And so we then flip. Actually, what I will do here, instead of flipping and showing you how to do this side, I will just show you guys how to do some of these here. And then we will work on this other side uh, on our own, if you know what I mean so what i will do here is then i'll just flip my work like this i'm right-handed so i need to work on it on this from this direction so again this is gonna be where my arm hold is here so i am going to actually start joining my work from where the solid starts okay. so again i still have my black yarn in the darning needle so on the very first stitch here i'm going to grab both sides like this and i'm gonna take it through like that and then when I have it like this, I'm going to take both sides here and do a knot just to secure that for now. And I'm not going to do another knot because I want to make sure that it's actually going to be staying like this in case I need to undo anything. And then from here on, as you can see, we don't really have actual stitches to work with on each of these sides here. So the logic that I used here is not the same logic we're going to be using on this section here. And so what we do is we just grab as much material on this side as we think is uh, good without taking too much but without taking too little and then you just pull and then you're gonna take move your uh, move your needle just a tiny bit down and from there you grab a little bit more and you move it down and then you go to the next and don't pull too much because if you pull too much it's gonna create a little bit of a wrinkly side on the other side when you end up flipping your work but just kind of like line up nicely and then just keep working on it by go making sure you're going not too far off but not too close to the previous one either and making sure you're grabbing enough material on each of the sides here and then you just move it down and make sure you're lining it up very nice and even as you can see here it's very straight okay because you want to make sure it's not going to be a little bit wompy and one side is going to be left longer than the other and then you're just going to continue this all the way to where the black ends right here and then when you finish that you're going to switch your yarn to the red and do the next part of the red and then you're going to again switch to the black and do the black part and so on and so forth but for now i'm going to take you guys all the way to where the black ends and then when you get there come back and i will show you how to start the red part okay. okay my lovelies so i have kind of come to the almost at the end of the black section of the top here of the dress so i have one more final one to do just right beside it as you can see this is where the yarn is coming through but i put it here and this is the moment where we take the yarn around the darning needle the tip of the darning needle and then pulling to create that knot that we don't want to do at a later time okay now that that's completed, I'm going to take my yarn and just snip it somewhere here. Okay. At a later time, we can weave in all these ends that are kind of just outstanding. Okay. Now I have my black uh, yarn here with the darning needle. I'm going to put this on the side. I have already taken another darning needle here and put the red in. If you, of course, happen to not have uh, multiple darning needles around, all you will have to do is undo this, remove it from the darning needle, insert the red yarn in, and then continue so for me it's just a little bit easier because i have a lot of darning needles so i don't have to keep removing it from the darning needle and change the color and then for the different color here so as you can see this is where the red one starts i'm just gonna go right there and start with my red 
okay and i'm gonna pull and pull this one is a little bit longer and when i have just a little bit left like this i'm gonna do a nod again just to secure this guy here like that and then by the way just so in case you need to see how it looks like you can always just flip your work like this so as you can see it's li literally invisible okay so you see this is where we started off here and this is where we went all the way to down here and that's kind of like the point you want to make sure that it's not looking like there's a huge seam uh visible okay anyway so going back to doing the red you just go ahead and pull that oh we need to knot this one more time like this i'm gonna do it one more just so it doesn't come off just like that okay and then of course from here on you do the same thing but you want to make sure you're lining up your stitches here very well because this is the mesh area versus this area that was solid so you want to make sure you're lining up your work very nicely like this and holding it in a nice spot and then what i do is i just go over the section that has a hole and i go through it like this and then the next stitch i go on this section that was a double crochet and i make sure i match it up with the other side so my darning needle is going to come out of the other side that also has the double crochet like this then i'm going to pull and again don't pull it too much make sure it's a little bit loose so that it doesn't create a a huge tension there and then we're gonna go into this open area like this and in this section I'm gonna do two so one is here and I'm gonna do one right here like that and if you keep uh, if you pay attention I'm actually not going into the actual hole here I'm just grabbing a little bit of the material and then when I get to this section I make sure I line it up like this and I go through it and then when it comes to this next spot here, I'm gonna go closest to this area on this side like this and grab some material on top, a little bit like that and pull. And then a second one is gonna go close to the other side here. So another one is gonna go right here like this. Comes up on the other side like this. And then the next one is right over our stitches here just like that and bring it over on the other side like this okay all right so go ahead and do this section here and again you're gonna do this all the way to where the red ends finish it like we finished the black side cut it uh rem cut it remove it to switch your yarn to the black do the black switch it back to the red do the red and you do that all the way down because keep in mind we have a lot of material to work with because it's a very long dress and then when you've completed this whole side completely, switch your yarn back to this side and do what we did here on this side on top of here. And then repeat the same thing completely the same on this side. And then when everything is done and sewn, come back to the video. And at that point, we will literally just look at how our work looks. What I will do while I'm offline is I will also weave in my ends. And because it's a mesh dress like this, it's not very easy to weave things in. So what I do is I just nod these guys. For example, I'll use the black and the black and nod it. And I'll do a nice clean nods here, just like nice and tight with the black. Cut it off. Okay, just cut it off somewhere like this. Because like I said, it's not very easy to weave these guys in. So you're just going to do it like this and like that. You can do one more if you want to make sure it's really secure. And then cut these guys off like this and that's gonna be part of what is on the inside of your dress so when you flip it you will not see these nods here it's just easier because it's very difficult to weave in when your dress is mesh like this it's gonna undo itself really fast and then you open up your dress okay so go ahead and work on your joining we have a lot of work to do with that and when you're done come back to the video so we can see how clean and nice our dress looks okay see you guys then okay my lovelies so i have gone ahead and did the joining of the dress so as you guys know, I always make changes uh, as I work because I freestyle my work. So as I do something, I see a different way of doing it and I go ahead and do that. But I make sure I explain it to you guys so that you're aware of what the changes were. So as you guys remember, when I talked about joining, I said join it all the way down. But I was joining and joining and joining. And then I realized maybe I could actually do a slit. And at first I stopped joining my work on each side. So this is the length that is not joined here. 
and i decided okay i can leave uh, this as a slit all the way down and then i did that i tried it on and i did not like the way it looked but then i also realized i could just join it like this so i left this whole gap here open and then i joined it at the edge here and then i left this whole block here open i joined it here and then of course this is the absolute bottom of the dress so i decided to do it like that instead so you guys obviously know that this is how i did it in the in the actual dress because you see the pictures uh at the beginning of the video here so yeah so i have the bottom of it like this where i for the last three blocks i leave small holes like this i join it here I have a hole here, join it here, and then I have the bottom that is open like this. So I find this to be a lot, lot better looking than if I was to join it straight. But again, that doesn't mean you guys should do it like this. If you want your dress to just be joined all the way down, please go ahead and do that. And if you want to have a slit that is just completely open, you can decide where to stop, how you want it. This is all going to be up to you. I'll show you guys the basic uh, design of the dress, and then you guys can kind of make your own little i guess um changes to make it fit your taste so i just think that this is really nice that i did it like this so it has an op it has opening like this at the end okay so it's pretty much done i decided to um flip the dress so i, I weaved in all the ends obviously as you can see there's nothing kind of hanging uh everywhere here so i weaved everything in and then i flipped it so that the right side is in so as you guys can see, when I joined it, I had it flipped the other way. I joined it and then I flip it back like this. That way, any of my knots where I weave in my work, it's all kind of covered by it being the inside of the dress. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So this is the end of the dress. I really like it. I hope you guys really, really like this. If you guys want me to do a solid one, a dress that is actually very similar to this, but is instead of it being mesh like this, it's solid. Let me know and I will go ahead and do a tutorial for that for you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about um, this kind of stuff that I'm making the wearables. If you guys have any suggestions of any other different kind of projects you want me to try, I am absolutely open for that as well. Yeah, so this is it here. Thank you so much. If you have not yet subscribed, please go ahead and do so and become part of this lovely family. And, uh, and if you have, thank you so much for supporting me. And I hope you guys will give the video a thumbs up and you will share with your friends who would like to try crocheting. And yes, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.